we have looked at what is the Holy Ghost, and now uh, we've also looked at uh, what we need, why we need the Holy Ghost this time that we're living in. Today we're going to be looking at how do you get the Holy Ghost? Because remember, it is the only way that you are going to enter eternity is by having that uh, Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Ghost, nothing doing. You will not make it. It doesn't matter how uh, holy you think you are. But it's not our holiness. It's the holiness of the Lord that we exude, that gives us that eternal life. It's when that part of God, that Zoe, that eternal, the Alpha and Omega, uh, the first and the beginning, in the last, the one who was before the foundation of the world, the eternal one, when that comes into your soul, that's when you become a new converted Christian and that entitles you to eternal life because you become part of God. You can't deny who is like, your hand is part of you, you can't deny it. Unless if you've got mental health problems, yes, you might do. But under normal circumstances, you don't deny any parts of your body that you have. So today we're going to be looking at how you get the Holy Ghost. You find that how to get the Holy Ghost is a very simple process because the way God does it, he does it in such a way, it's so simple. Even uh, the simple man or woman is able to access it. He has made it accessible to anybody who has need, who has a need for it. It's not an exclusive club. Well, in a way it is an exclusive club, but it's joining, the joining of it is as easy as easy can be. So how do I get the Holy Ghost? Let's go to Acts 2 verse 37. Now when they had this they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the disciples, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as our Lord shall call. So for some people who think that this uh, gospel is only for white people, it's not for white people. In fact, what has happened is uh, the, the, the white, white uh, historians have uh, changed everything to suit their own environment, which I don't blame them in a way, because if, for instance, a, a black man is writing the history, surely Jesus would have been black. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus is neither black nor white. God is neither black nor white. God is God and is eternal. All these colors, it's just like a, a bouquet of flowers in the, in the eyes of God, black, green, whatever. It's a bouquet of flowers for him. So those that concentrate more on the color, remember, <clears throat> it's not your body, your color that's going to go to heaven, it's your soul. And your soul is inside and your soul there's no color. It has only got a, a, a nature that is in it. Although when we go to heaven, we're going to have a body, a theophany, that is like unto God, a body that can go through walls and so forth. But anyway, before we get ahead of ourselves, how do I get the Holy Ghost? If you look at uh, verse 38 there, the first thing Peter tells the people is to repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. So without proper, unadulterated repentance and being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you will not receive the, the gift of the Holy Ghost because God has got a system. It's like the company you work for or the whatever system you have, every institution has got a system of how they do things. And this is how God does them, and it's very simple. So we're going to look at uh, repentance and uh, what is repentance and uh, what is the water baptism. Right. Repentance, as it is described in the, uh, you know, uh, in the dictionary, is a profound feeling of sorrow, regret for the wrongs that you have done. Say, for instance, you were drunk 
and the womanizer. When you repent, you come in and tell uh, the pastors or the people that are there that, look, I was a drunk. I was a womanizer. But from here on, I want to stop this life. I don't like this life. I don't like smoking. I don't like drinking. I don't like womanizing. I don't like being a prostitute. I don't like all these things that you don't like. So you repent of them. And repentance is a turn of 180 degrees. <clears throat> it's a flat line. So if you are going north, repentance means you've turned, you're now going south. So it means the, the old life that you lived is now behind you. That is proper repentance. And there are people in churches today who have repented, they've sinned while they've changed, they've committed adultery, they've done all these things, and uh, you know, uh, gone against the word, but they still don't repent because they think, because you've been in the message or in the, in the uh, church for a long time, it does not, it does not, I repeat, preclude you from repentance. The reason many people, especially in the message of no, <clears throat> Holy Ghost is because they lack repentance. They do things that are wrong and God just let it, let it go because he's, uh, he's a merciful God. He'll let you struggle along, but one day the rattles of death shall be in your throat and you will not be able to repent of the things that you have done. So it's important even as a seasoned Christian, you will make mistakes. So the idea is to repent as and when you need to. So if you find that you haven't got the Holy Ghost, <coughs> excuse me, there is something that is holding you back. You have not repented of some sin or something that you did. Like for instance, I'll give you an example. If a man uh, goes and has an another woman instead of uh, his own wife, the proper way to repent is this. You come back, you repent to your wife, and then you take your wife to the woman that you uh, uh, sinned with, and then you repent there as well. So once you have done that, you've done your duty, the last thing you do is you go to God to ask for forgiveness. But many people, they don't repent. They, they, they probably repent to their own wives, and then that will be the end of it. But if you don't go to the other woman that you have committed the sin with, it's still not complete. So you need to do proper repentance because repentance means you are sorrowful. You are regretting what you did. But if you don't repent, it means that you are not regretting anything that you did. And that is why you haven't got the Holy Ghost because you haven't repented properly. And for mostly for the young children that were born in the message, you have a sense of entitlement. You think God owes you. God owes nobody nothing. You need to repent of all the wrongs that you have done if you need to get that Holy Ghost. And then the following stage is water baptism. It is important to do the proper baptism. I know many people baptize in Matthew 28, 19. But remember, he says baptize in the name. In fact, I'm not going to go into it. If you want to know the true baptism, I've done another video on here which talks about the true baptism. So when you repent and then you get baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, then the third one, you will receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost because it's a gift. It's God saying, yes, you have repented properly till you've been baptized properly. Your life is straight. You're now moving in a straight and narrow way. That is God's way. Because remember, there's a highway and then a way in the middle. So once you get into that way in the middle, then that entitles you to the Holy Ghost. Because Brother Branham actually says that full obedience to the word entitles you uh, to the Holy Ghost. We'll have a look at some of the um, scriptures that uh, talk about you know, the baptism and so forth and why it is uh, what it is. Right, if you go to John 14, 26, says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. So you see, receiving the Holy Ghost entitles you to having that fellowship with the Holy Ghost. He will teach you. That's why you end up believing the whole Bible. 
<clears throat> because it is the Holy Ghost in you teaching you of the things that you need to do and bring all things to remembrance. So it means it will remind you of things that you need to do. If you're doing something wrong, you get something just pushes you that you are doing wrong. So the Holy Ghost is that important to keep us straight and narrow. Like David said, we are <clears throat> clay. Mistakes. So if you go to Matthew 3, 1, 1, John here is saying, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. He was introducing the Lord Jesus Christ. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you in the Holy Ghost with fire. So the Holy Ghost is a fire, the pillar of fire. The same pillar of fire that uh, took the children of Israel from uh, Egypt into Canaan's land is the same pillar of fire that we have today. So when you have <clears throat> the Holy Ghost, it means you are experiencing everything that anybody in the Bible has experienced from the Old Testament to the New Testament. So it means you are partaking of the same bread that all the others that have gone before us have partook of. So you go to 2 Peter 1.21, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is able to move you. That's why you find that a proper preacher is somebody who is moved by the Holy Ghost. A proper Christian is somebody who is moved by the Holy Ghost. When you pray for, the, for a job, the Holy Ghost moves you to that particular job because he knows what's happening in every job. And then Luke 2, 2, 25, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same was, man was just and devout, just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Ghost was upon him. The reason he was just and devout and the man of God was because the Holy Ghost was upon him. So when you become, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you become holified, you become holy in the eyes of God because that's where it matters most because when you have the Holy Ghost, that means uh, the, 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 the sacrifice is waiting for you. So God does not actually see you. He sees the sacrifice, the Lord Jesus Christ's blood, and he just hears your voice. And then he looked to 26, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will reveal something to you that has nothing to do with your pastor. Like for instance, if it's your calling, it comes directly to you, not by your pastor. Because you were not called in this world by your pastor or your, your prophet or whatever. You were called by God. It's a personal relationship with God himself. And if you are walking with God in the right manner, anybody else who's walking with God should get along with you. So if you are walking with God and somebody doesn't get along with you, one of you is wrong. So you need to look at that. Because if I'm walking on the same road, highway, and they are on the same highway, then we are on the same highway. We are not going to be arguing about things and so forth. All right, so you see the revelation comes from the Holy Ghost. The book of Revelation was given to John on the Isle of Patmos through the Holy Ghost by revelation. Luke 4, 1, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan after he had been baptized and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. That's where he went to fast 40 days and 40 nights. So here, <clears throat> we have people that for fast millions of, you know, it's like it's competition. You see, you must wait until, because when you fast through the Holy Ghost, you don't get hungry. Because you find that if you read further, after the 40 days, which was uh, the time appointed for by the Holy Ghost, then he became hungry. So when you say, I'm going to fast three days, three days, which is the, 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 the normal anyway, you don't have to do 20, 40, 40 days and all this, it's not necessary. It's not necessary because it's not by works, it's by grace that you are saved. So when you say, I'm going on a three day fast and then the first day you feel hungry, just eat because it's not the Holy Ghost. You're doing it by yourself. And when you do it by yourself, you're not gonna win anything, it's not gonna help you, right? Luke 12, 12, for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour when what you ought to say. So the Bible also says, don't think of what you're going to say, whether it be in court, whatever, for the Holy Ghost, when you have it, 
it will give you that which you need in the time of need. Let's see what Brother Branham says in, uh, in a couple of uh, messages here, questions and answers. He says, the Holy Spirit is what? You are believing unto eternal life, but when the Holy Spirit comes, it is eternal life. You are believing unto when you don't have the Holy Ghost. You are a begotten of the Spirit at sanctification, but never bond of the Spirit until the Holy Ghost comes in. That's correct. A baby's got life in the womb of the mother. Little muscles are quivering. It's a life, but it's a different life when it breathes the breath of life into its nostrils. It's a different life. So that's the same thing a baby in the womb as he's saying there. It's still alive, but it's not the same life when it comes. That's why when it's born, it's got to be spent, and then it cries, and then it takes the breath of breath. It's another life. It's a higher life than the life that it was living in the, in the mother's womb. Right, in expectation, he says, God said, separate yourself from all your kindred. He's talking about Abraham here. That's what you've got to do a lot of times. Separate yourself from a lot of unbelief. And remember, until Abraham fully obeyed God, the blessing never came until he fully obeyed. He took his daddy along. And he caused a lot of trouble. And then Lot finally caused him trouble too and the headsman. And as soon as he got separated from everything like God, he fully obeyed. Then he came into full obedience and then God brought the blessing. So until you separate, it might even mean separating from relatives, from people that are you know, fighting against you, people that pull you backwards and downwards. Because remember, this walk is a personal walk. There's only uh, room for you and Jesus. And when God calls for a total separation, he wants you to separate from anything that is negative, anything that does not believe the Bible. So if you find someone who says, I believe part of the Bible and I don't believe uh, part of it, that is your enemy. Because when you need the Holy Ghost, you have to believe the whole thing. As it, is, it comes as a package. I'll give you an example. How can you say, I love my wife's face, but I don't like her body? It doesn't make sense. When you get married, you love the person from head, head to toe with all their imperfections. But in God, there's no imperfections. The Bible is the only perfect thing that we have. Because remember, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The Bible is God himself. So when you take part of the Bible and say, I don't believe this, or the times have changed, what you're saying is you're taking part of what God is. And once you take that little part, the whole thing disappears. Until you put that part, then everything else appears. That's how important it is to believe the whole Bible as it is. So full obedience entitles you to the Holy Ghost when you obey the word of the Lord. He's talking about Abraham now in Jehovah Jireh. Brushed back his hair, took the knife, pulled it out of the sheath, raised up, just started to st stab him, his own little boy to death. And when he raised his hand in full obedience, the Holy Spirit caught him, his hand, and said, Abraham, stay your hand. I know you love, for you wouldn't spare even your own son. You are not asked to kill any of your children. But sometimes the full obedience is like the, the women that wear the, this makeup. It's, it's for women, not for Christian women, because Christian women are a different rank. For women that wear these mini skates, what do you wear a mini skirt for to show your under clothes and so forth? So for Christian women, which are the people that I'm targeting, Christians, you don't. Sometimes you have to lose that mini skirt. You have to lose that makeup because remember, the only woman that wore makeup in the Bible as an example was Jezebel, and she was a prostitute. So in the eyes of God, anyone wearing makeup and all these things. Is still a prostitute today because God does not change. So for full obedience, for you to get the Holy Ghost, you might have to lose that makeup kit. You might have to lose that Brazilian fake hair. You might have to lose a lot of things that you need to, a baggage that you have. It seems so simple, but that's how God does it. And that's how he likes it. And it's his business. So 
you have to weigh whether going to heaven and looking uh, uh, pretty with the, because it is pretty when they put that makeup and all this makes them look young. Yes, which one is heavier? Which one do you value more? So you find that the one you value more is the way you are going to lean it, because the Bible says the way a tree, lean, tree leans, that's the way it's going to fall. So if you value your makeup more than valuing the word of God, then you are leaning towards the devil and that's where you're going. And when God, that is in the patriarch Abraham, expects you to do a special thing, he demands a complete separation, separation from any doubt. You've got to come to full obedience to obey what he says. God demands it. So does everybody. If you work for a company and they say, well, yeah, we wear suits here. If you come in your pajamas, you'll be fired. You can't do it no other way. So you see, you have no other way. You have no choice in it. God has already set the system for everybody else. So you have to fall into the system. But many of us try to pray to change God's mind. God is not going to change his mind. It's up to you to change your mindset to suit what God is. That's why the Bible says, let the mind of Christ be in you. And now he always sets an example, and that was his example of Abraham, of a complete separation from all his family, all his kindred, and so forth, and walk a life separated to God. So you must think today, what is it that is dragging you down? What is it that you need to give up to get to that Holy Ghost? Because remember, Without the Holy Ghost, you're not going to make it. And sometimes you leave it too late, and then you just die. Without, you might die in an accident. In the next hour, you won't have time to repent. And the only thing that's standing between you and heaven is that makeup kit. Is it going to be worth it? Do the math. Which one is more important to you, the makeup kit, or going to heaven. In the, in the message, the token, Brother Branham says, the token is the sign that the purchase has been made and been accepted. Now you can't get the token from the railroad fair until you pay the price. So you can't get the, 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 the token or maybe a plane ticket until you pay the price. When you pay it online, they send you the tickets electronically. But in the, in the case of the Holy Ghost, the price was paid already at Calvary. So all you have to do is to come God's provided way to accept what he has already given you. Right, that's right. What? Believe it, accept it. So full obedience to the whole word of God will entitle you to the to token. Full obedience, he repeats. Note the part of it as far as the denomination goes, but all of it, full obedience to the word which is Christ brings you unto Christ. So it doesn't matter what your denomination thinks, nobody cares, God doesn't care. All he cares about is when you fully obey, and sometimes, like I said, some small things, some adultery, some thing that you did, that you have not repented properly for is keeping you from the kingdom of God. Remember, it's so difficult to repent, say, if you have committed adultery, but when you do it properly, you kind of, when you do repentance, you kind of let you off, you know, a, a burden is lifted from your shoulder. So whatever is holding you back, that's why you're always stressed up. You're always thinking negative is because that non-repentance, that unrepentant sin is bogging you down. Remember, when you repent of anything that you have done, the burden is lifted off your shoulders. And remember, always way is repenting so high a price that you would rather miss heaven so you see, free moral agents, that's why God gives us the choice to choose this or to choose the, this. 
So if heaven is more important to you, then you will repent of anything that you have done. But the easiest way to do, do not do these big sins like you know committing adultery, especially some of you married men, you commit adultery with other women and that your wife is faithful at home. That shows you have not arrived at all. There are so many widows today, so many widowers. I'm a widower as well in the last year and a half who are living a clean life, living for the Lord, waiting for the coming of the Lord. And yet some people who are married, good wives or good husbands, they still find time to go and commit adultery. Remember, until you repent of that particular sin, you will never have the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost only comes in the body that has already been prepared, that is clean. That's why we go through justification, sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Justification is God saying, yes, I'll take you. And then sanctification is when all this repentance must happen, where you repent of everything that you've done. Even the, That's why I find Nehemiah, he even repented of the sins of his ancestors. So when you're not sure what you've done against the Lord, say, Lord, I'm repenting even for the sins of my ancestors, so that you cover all bases. Because sometimes there's a sin like spirit, spirits or familiar spirits that run in families. I'll do a separate uh, video on that, but just a quick one. Familiar spirits are evil spirits, devils, that work within particular families, and that's what brings people down. Because every time you want to be a Christian, those familiar spirits, they know that you are losing a person. So they fight you hard. So when they're fighting hard, it means the devil hasn't got you yet. But if he's not fighting you, you're already in this kingdom. Shalom. I hope this has uh, been helpful to you. If I don't see you here on earth, I'll see you one day beyond the blue in the new world. God bless you. Shalom. And God be with you in everything that you're doing. And let it be for the honor and glory of God, whatever we do. Shalom.